Hello and welcome to today's video in which we're going to look at the uh, get command. We already talked about the put command. So if you want to know more about the put command, check out my channel and it should be there somehow. Search for put uh, in which this PLC has written some data to this PLC, put just putting data into the storage. This time we want to have get, which is from this PLC, we start a command and this will get us some data from the second PLC to the first PLC. So we will read data from the second PLC. For this, some preconditions as for the put command, um, they both need to be in the same, you see it, ethernet uh, network. Uh, so 192.168.0 is my choice here. The second one, the one we want to read from is 102. The first one is 101. <clears throat> That's the first, the second, just for the repetition, if you don't want to watch the other video, here is the second thing that we need to do. For the second PLC that we want to get the data from, we need to allow, we have to permit um, the access. This you can do by clicking on the PLC, going properties, general, and then we have protection and security. You scroll down a little bit and there it says connection mechanism, permit access with put get communication from remote partner. This needs to be active for the second PLC because we want to read data from it. Right. It does not need to be active for the first PLC because we're just we're not accessing the data here, right, from somewhere else. So just from the one we want to read data from or that we want to write the data into. <clears throat> yeah, those are our preconditions. The third precondition, I have some data on the second PLC here. In my second PLC, I have those two. Right, data comes from here. It's an integer on memory word zero, and data two comes from here as a real that is in memory double word two. So those two I want to read and uh, I want to get from this PLC. So we, from now on, I don't need to touch that PLC anymore. I just want to make sure that it's downloaded. Here we go. Got that. <clears throat> so the second PLC. That's all the preconditions I need to do. You see those numbers here? They are doing something. So some calculations are going on here but I don't need to touch it, right? I don't care anymore. I would just go offline and push that to the side for later use. <clears throat> Good, now let's get to the get command. In my main function here, usually I would create a new function and so on, but here let's do it just simply in the main function. You can search for zit. Here in the instructions on the right side, we have communication, yeah, communication. I can open it and there we have S7 communication, right? And there we have get, which we uh, put, what we already talked about, and get. I can take get and put it here on in my main or anywhere in your function. It needs an instance data block because it is a function block. If you need to know more about this, check out my channel. There's a video about it. Uh, something about function blocks and instancing. <clears throat> so now that I have this, uh, automatically generated was this get database, right? The get data data block. And you see there's a lot of stuff in here. No need to touch it, but it's there. It needs to be unique, right? If you have a second get, like if you copy and paste this, you have two times the same data block, which won't work. You would have to get a second data block for that, right? Talking about function blocks. So, uh, as the same as in put, you have this little toolbox here. If when you click on the toolbox, right, a window, uh, why am I in the middle here? Well, here we go. A window will open down here, right, when clicking on the toolbox. And this is our parameterization window. We don't need anything else. For the operation of this block, we don't need anything else. The first thing we need to set are the uh, connection parameters. And here we have as the local partner, this is where the program is running, our PLC. And as the partner partner, we can use unspecified or we use the PLC. If we have the other PLC in our project, we can simply use that. If we do not have it and want to communicate to another project, basically, uh, to another PLC that's in a different project, we can take unspecified, which I prefer. I can take unspecified and I just need to type in the Ethernet address of this one. 0102. And also right now my PLC does not communicate into any network. So I need to go to device and networks and I need to put this one here. This PLC wants to communicate on this interface. I will need to say just add new net subnet. But you see with this line, now it is in a network. And everything here should be green with my communication. 
Good. If you already have a put or get communication, um, you can always you can simply use the same S7 connection here. You don't have to create a new one. You can use the same one uh, because this identifies the same partner. If you want to communicate to a different partner, of course, you would have to create a new connection here, which automatically happens. You don't need to take care of. Automatically happens just for your information what that is. Good. Next, we get the block parameters, and this is everything that we need to parameterize, like when do you want to um, get the data, uh, which data do you want to get. Uh, the request I have, again, this push button here, you could also put a frequency or some other tricks. There's many, many possibilities, so it almost dropped. Uh, I prepared this push button, which I called start button. So whenever I press the start button, I will get the data. Then we need two things right a read area this is the area from the other plc and a store area this is from our plc as we are talking about areas here we have to use um we have to use some addressing right how we use and can work with data blocks that are optimized and we're not really using addresses anymore uh, i will talk about in the next video right now i will just get this into global memories into without using data blocks right Next video will be about using data blocks. <clears throat> so read area, specify the area on the partner CPU that is to be read. Um, I remember it, it's this stuff here, right? And first, I just want to start with the first one here, which is memory word zero. So the start of this is M0.0, M0.0. And the length is, it's a memory word, so it's, one word, right? One word or one int. It's the same length. Actually, it doesn't make a difference. One int or one word, right? And now it's added here. You can see it's here. Next thing, where do I want that in my local memory? Hey, I also want to put it to memory zero zero, and it's also one int, right? So now it's going to be put into that area. Very good. That's all we need to do. That's all we need to do, but there's still some smaller issues here. Let's see, I will download that to my PLC here. Bop -ba -doo, done. It's done. And I can already go online. And whenever I press this button here, you see I'm sending a request and it's actually doing that. And the only problem I have right now is I am writing here into an area, right? Into an area. And if I go to my tags here, I don't have that area defined somewhere. I have my tag, tag one, which is memory zero, zero, but that's not really it. I'm using memory word zero, right? So of course I would have to create a variable for it. And this is int. And now here we go. So we're really talking about memory areas where this is really bit level, byte level and so on. Make sure, make sure that this and this, that they have the same length. If they do not have the same length, like this is one int and this is 15 int, it won't really work. It will do something, but it won't really work. So make sure that they have the same length if it comes to on a bit level. One integer is one word is 16 bit. You will need to calculate a little bit there. <clears throat> so let's see, I'm online. And whenever I press the button now, you see, and you hear, Whenever I press the button, I'm reading the current number out of the other PLC, right, which changes a little bit, whatever the program does with that number. I don't know, we are just getting it. But only if I press the button, right? I could also add this request input here. I could have um, a frequency like, like uh, clock memory. So every one second or so I'm reading the data or whatever. Uh, you can also put this NDR, but this needs a little bit of logic there as well. So the best usually is really to put a frequency of one hertz here or so, depending on how fast you need the data or really on request whenever you need the data, might not need it always. So what can I do if I want to also read this one here, right? It's a real number. So we have memory word zero and we have memory double word two, which is in total one word, two words, three words, right? If I want to read three words, right, I can just go here and change the length. I can just say word three, right? I can manually change this here if you know the codes, or I could also click on the toolbox and I can say, hey, I want to read 
three word. And then the changes here automatically. Um, again, I will need to make a variable out of this. Data two goes here was a real and it is memory double word two. Now we need to pay attention of how the data is structured. And that's also a very bad part about doing it with addressing and not with databases uh, and data blocks. I will get to data blocks in the next video, which makes it for me, for my thinking, actually easier. Um, but that's that's just however you like it. So now I've got the second one here and let's go online here. Let's go online here. Right now it's still... Pretty difficult to read, right? Let's do it like this. It's zero, zero. If I press the button, I'm actually reading the data, right? You see, whenever I press the button, I'm actually taking the data and uh, getting, that's what it is. I get the data from here and get it in here, right? Whenever I press the button on the rising edge. That's the get command. In the next video, I will um, talk about the uh, use of data blocks because it's not that easy. We have optimized block access and so on, uh, but we'll get there. I hope I didn't forget something. Uh, if I did, if you think I did, just put a comment down below. I will try to answer it or someone else could also answer it. Um, if you have any questions or anything unclear, uh, just put a comment as well. If this was helpful, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe for more content. And I will see you in the next video once more. Look at this. Whoop. New data, new data. Bye and have a nice day. Bye-bye.